If you're an Amazon seller that wants to set up a product insert funnel where the customer texts you in order to get support or in order to get a free item, then keep watching this video because I'm gonna show you an SMS text product insert funnel that I set up for a client, which basically, you know, it's gonna be an insert, it's gonna be a little sticker on the client's product and it's gonna say uh, SMS text this keyword or visit this landing page in order to get customer support. Now with this funnel, we took the more customer support route, where with you, you can either go customer support, you can go warranty route, you can go get a free item, you know, a marketing approach where your BOGO deal, uh, give them a promo code for the next order in your insert, driving them over to this SMS text flow, you can drive them from an insert over to a landing page. But in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to actually set this up inside a many chat account, setting up this SMS text flow. So stay tuned and let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, so starting things off, let me tell you who I am. My name is Ian Smith and I run an Amazon marketing agency called Evolve Media. We work with a lot of Amazon sellers and we help them with running Facebook ads, Google ads, setting up funnels like this with SMS texting, with mini chat, building out landing pages, email marketing, chat bot type of stuff if you wanna use the Messenger platform. So we have Amazon sellers with a lot of different stuff. We help them rank products, get reviews, increase average uh, revenue, things like that. So if you wanna book a free consulting call with me, then head over to evolvemedia.agency and I look forward to chatting with you. All right, so just a little bit of a overview of this overall funnel and overall customer support flow. Basically, the customer is going to reach out and initiate the process by texting a certain keyword to a specific phone number that we basically got for free from ManyChat. Now, ManyChat doesn't allow you to port in an external number. They basically just give you a random number and that's what it is. You can't choose what the phone number is, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Maybe down the line, they'll let you port in a phone number and you can have some flexibility with that. But yeah, as of right now, it's just a 10-digit phone number. So like I mentioned, it starts with the customer texting a certain keyword, then that is going to initiate the line of questions. Now, in this funnel, we are collecting their first name, last name, email, phone number, Amazon order ID, and then the actual issue that they're having with their product or with their order. So once all that information is collected through ManyChat and through the text messaging process, then Zapier takes over, and Zapier is an automation platform that basically connects all your different apps and tools. Really great if you don't know about it. Zapier pulls that information out of ManyChat, and then it's gonna send it over to Klaviyo, which is the client's email software that we're using for all of our email and marketing messaging, and then it's gonna send it to a Google Sheet, and then it is going to send that information to the customer support team so that whoever is the team member in charge of handling all these customer support requests, so that they'll get email pinged, and then in that email notification is gonna be a link over to the Google Sheet where they can see all of the different requests that have come in and know, did the request come from SMS text in ManyChat, or did it come from our landing page which is another video, but we are giving, like I mentioned, the customer the option to go to either SMS texting or just go to a landing page and fill out all this same information. All right, so now I'm gonna actually show you inside the ManyChat platform what this flow looks like. Now it's very simple and it all starts with this little starting step right here. It's just a keyword trigger. So they are going to type the word chat and text it to the account's phone number that we have you know, linked with this account. So they're gonna text that over. Once they text that word chat, then, and, and I guess let me show you real quick. So we chose to go with message contains. Now there are other options. Let me move that over a little bit. So you can do message is, message contains, message contains whole word, you can switch it up. I personally just like message contains. Now obviously that could trigger it if somebody is in a different conversation and they just happen to type the word chat, so just keep that in mind. But um, yeah, so we went with that word and then um, it's gonna then send them this message right here. Okay, so it says, thanks for reaching out. Let's get started with your support request. Please tell us your first name. Now, with this one, we wanted to separate asking the first name and the last name because we're going to put the first name into Klaviyo, and when we do email marketing to them, we just want to have the first name on file. We don't wanna have both first and last name because when we send an email, we're gonna include a little code that says, hey, first name, you know, so we chose to separate it like that. Believe me, I, th I thought a lot about this because it does add an extra step. So. You know, we, we also debated, do we even need their last name? 
But anyway, we decided to do get their first name and then we have a reply type as just the text. Now you can do number, email, and, and the good thing about doing email for the reply type is that if they type in an invalid email, like they mess up, it's going to then automatically say, hey, that doesn't look like a valid email, please try again. So um, you can also do that with the phone number step, but I found some issues with that because they have to type it in an exact way with their phone number and people type their phone number all different kinds of ways. So I just kept everything pretty much as a text field, uh, except for the email. All right, so that's a text. And then um, when you're building this out, you're gonna actually want to, let me see here. So you're gonna wanna select the input form as a uh, input. You know, there's there's only three options when it comes to ManyChat SMS. Uh, you either have just text or you have like a user input. So this is just a user input. I created my custom fields. So this one is just called SMS first name. And then that's pretty much it. If it's, it says if contact has not responded in 23 hours and they, so 24 hours or a day or a couple days later goes by and they message, then it's not going to save that response as the actual custom field if they don't reply until a few days later, right? So uh, you can change this up, but I just left it at 23 hours. Majority of the time people are going to, you know, proceed right away. So anyway, first name, we collect their last name, then we collect their email address. Now, like what I was telling you, reply type email, and then if it doesn't look like a valid email, they're gonna get this message right here that says, please enter a correct email address. Um, skip by response by typing skip. Now, um, we wanna make uh, emails required, so, you know, I'll probably end up just deleting this and, um, not giving them the option because that's going to be our main communication channel with them is through email. So uh, please enter a correct email address, e.g. Uh, mail, and then we'll just make it at gmail.com because that's more. Who's got a mail.com email, you know? <laughs> um, okay, so that's pretty cool about the, the email. Then we collect their phone number. Thanks, what's the best phone number to reach you at? And then I, I tell them, most likely we won't need to call you, but just in case we do, um, you know, give us over your phone number. Now you're probably thinking, well, didn't they text you? Didn't they have that phone number? Yes, they did. And yes, we can have that number on file, but it's always great to kind of receive it just in case maybe they're texting from a different phone. Maybe they have, they want to have a different number on file. We just want to be straightforward and transparent with that. So, um, we, we get their phone number from them and then it says, great, please tell us your Amazon order ID number uh, so we can verify. And then we give them an example of what a order ID should look like. So again, it's just being saved as an SMS order ID number. Now this is somewhat of an optional step because we don't necessarily need their order ID. We could ask for it down the line if we do need it, but it will definitely help us pull up their Amazon order if we have their order ID number. So we're collecting that information. Then we say, now can you please explain the issue that we're having? Because again, this is a customer support uh, text message flow. So we get them to you know, say, hey, um, this was the issue with my order, blah, blah, blah. Again, all this information is being pulled over to a Google Sheet, so I'll show you that here in a second. Then it says, great, we, you're all set. We've just sent you a confirmation email, and a member of our team will review your answers and send you a reply to this email address. Now, how we did that and pulling in the email address that they actually gave us before is basically you come in here and you click on the little uh, brackets right there, and then you go find the custom field that you created, which I just happened to name SMS email. So that's always a cool way to kind of just double verify with them. Now, if I really wanted to, I could have like a whole nother flow just in case they are like, oh no, that's the wrong email, I need to change it. Um, they may just have to manually type in, hey, that's the wrong email, here's my right email. Uh, and then they would just, you know, and, and that's why, so when, when I show you later in this video, the Zapier step as far as Zapier sending that notification email to the customer support team member, it's gonna say in that Zapier email, lead came from ManyChat because then what the customer support person can do is come into ManyChat, go to the live chat and look at that entire message flow to make sure that if the customer deviated from any kind of the regular questioning that we're asking them, then the customer support team member can see that information there in ManyChat. So it is always good to have a manual review and be able to see this stuff and manually look through conversations because occasionally customers going through these, these flows do deviate and they text in something else. And so it, it gets a little messy sometimes, but, but that's pretty much it. Very basic, just line of questioning. Then let me zoom out a little bit and show you right here. Now, ideally they make it all the way 
to the end of the actual questioning, right? I mean, it's a support request. Hopefully they would make it all the way to the end. So when they answer that last question saying, please explain the issue, it's going to then add a tag right here. It has an action here, I'll move that up has an action to add tag customer support request. Now that is what actually triggers the Zapier automation to run. Now you can trigger the Zapier automation to run from a custom field being filled in. Um, you can do it a tag, those are pretty much the two options. Custom field being filled in, then you would tell Zapier, this is what custom field to watch for. When this gets filled in brand new, then trigger the entire automation. Um, so it's just up to you if you want to do tag. I'm going to show you in this Zapier example, I'm going to show you how I actually did it using a tag. So that's what I'm going to be showing you next is setting up the actual Zapier automation to send this many chat information over to a Google Sheet, over to the customer support team member, and make sure that the email address gets over to Clavio so that we can send them that confirmation email that we promised them right here. And then the main communication channel is going to be email moving forward. All right, so here we are in Zapier, and this is the sequence of automation, the sequence of steps that I have set up for this Zapier automation. So it all starts with a trigger with the ManyChat new tagged user in ManyChat. So you're going to want to set up your account, link it up with Zapier and everything, and then I have the tag selected here, customer support request, which matches the tag over in ManyChat. So once a customer support request tag is added to a user, then it is going to trigger this automation. So the next step is going to be adding subscriber to Clavio. So we have our Clavio account linked up with Zapier. Pretty simple. Basically, it is adding them to a specific list in Clavio. And then in Clavio, we have a little flow set up so that when somebody is added to this list, automatically a confirmation email gets sent over to them. So that's a whole nother video talking about Clavio and setting all that up. But whatever email software you're using, whether it's MailChimp or Clavio, um, have it so that when it's added to a list, an automated email gets sent out to them. So that's basically what we have going on here, very simple. Then right here, we have it set up with the Google Sheets. All right, so now on the Google Sheets step, basically it is taking the information from ManyChat, the custom fields that we have created. Uh, it's taking their first name, their last name, email, phone, it's taking their Amazon order ID number, the issue that they're having, um, whether it came from ManyChat or the lander. Now, this is another column that I have set up in the Google Sheets, as you can see right here. So we have first name, last name, email, phone, Amazon order ID number, how can we help you, ManyChat lander or lander. So um, we have two Z Zapier zaps set up so that um, if they came in on the lander, then it would write lander right there. And then the customer support person knows, oh, let me go you know, check ManyChat or let me just stay in here because it came in from the lander. So anyway, as you can see, the information is being populated under the different columns. And so that is pretty much it. I definitely recommend having a date and time. Um, so it's just pulling in the, the time that the user last interacted and then it's sending it over here to the Google Sheet. So that just makes things a little bit easier for when you are uh, you know, going back and you're like, oh man, this, this guy reached out a month ago. We need to really get, get a response back to him. So that is pretty much it for as far as um, linking up the Zapier and sending it over to the Google Sheet. So now let me show you the actual outbound email that gets sent over to the customer support team member. So this is just a Zapier uh, stock action that you can set up. There's no linking it with other email providers, which is really cool. It's just a, a basic outbound email. We always use it as like a backend internal type of email, notification type of email. So let me show you how we set this up. All right, so here's the step, send outbound email. Now to set up this action, basically this is what we did. It's gonna be a, you put in your two email address, the subject is a new ManyChat SMS customer support message, and then we've brought in all of the fields right here. So this is the actual body of the email. So when you click there, it's gonna immediately drop down the different uh, tools that you have listed, and then you can go ahead and pull in the custom fields from ManyChat and put them right into the email body. Really slick, really awesome. So we're pulling in Johnny's first name, Johnny's last name, email, phone number, and then the issue here, I actually hard wrote in text, issue is, and then we pull in the actual issue that he wrote, 
And then I'm actually linking them right over to the Google Sheet so it's really easy for the customer support person to just immediately jump from here right into the Google Sheet. Now I could take this a step further and link them all the way over to Minichat, link them to Klaviyo, but uh, I just link them to the Google Sheet. So I highly recommend also just immediately linking them so that when they get that email, it's just real easy for them to to link over. Now, another thing that you want to make sure you have set up is this force line breaks. Now, make sure that it's set to true. For some reason, Zapier sets it to false, which means that it's just, there's not going to be any like line formatting. It's just going to all be like one big blob of text. So what this does is this allows me to like enter in spaces and kind of format the text a little bit nicer. But yeah, make sure that it's true. Go ahead and con hit continue, turn on the zap, and then you should be all good when it comes to setting up your Zapier, because again, info is being pulled from ManyChat, sent over to Klaviyo or whatever email provider, sent over to Google Sheets, and then sent to your internal team, notifying them that um, a new support request has come in. And then with your Google Sheets side, you're gonna wanna make sure that you put up your column heads as you know what they are. So that is pretty much it. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. Thank you for watching this video. Again, if you want to book a free consulting call with me, head over to evolvemedia.agency and I'll catch you in the next one.